In 1980, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird ushered in a golden age for the NBA. They were both built like big men, but played with unconventional perimeter skills that no one had really seen before. Sound familiar? Victor Wembanyama and Chet Holmgren are even taller, and I think they're the best rookie duo to enter the league since the 1980s. Using basketball references box plus minus as a quick proxy, Wemby and Chet are both over plus three. Kawhi Leonard and Kyrie Irving are the only other rookies to do that this century. And in our own proprietary models, Holmgren and Wembenyama have had considerably better seasons than them. I think you have to go back to Michael Jordan and Hakeem Olajuwon in 1985 to find a rookie duo this good. And while Holmgren and Wembenyama didn't quite make the all-star team, they've certainly played around all-star levels this season while performing vastly different roles for their teams. Chet's only 21, but he's already a Swiss army knife for the Thunder's cutting edge offense. He's a strong roll threat out of the traditional pick and roll action. He can set the screen and play the pick and pop game as a 37% three point shooter, but more importantly, he can pop and then attack off the dribble against his recovering defender. He's even flashed potential initiating the pick and roll, getting into the paint, and playing off the dribble. Instead of using the screen here, he goes the other way around Wemby and then drops a perfect dime for a layup. Victor actually runs more pick and rolls as a ball handler, and he's slippery enough to drive and do crazy stuff like that, but he's also audacious enough to just use a high ball screen and raise up for three. So you'll find plays where Vic comes off a screen in the corner like a guard, then screens for the ball handler like a traditional center, then stops short so he can run the pick and roll, and all this taxes the opposing center giving him room to raise up and shoot, but it's a pass over the top, and these guys are just unfair. Webin Yama is already a really good passer as a big man, and he's had a larger primary role in the Spurs offense this season as a playmaking hub, and as an off-ball target in all kinds of situations like this. So, Wemby's role for the rebuilding Spurs has been as an offensive centerpiece, where he gets more isolation touches as the team works off the attention that he draws. Meanwhile, Chet's integrated on a contender next to stars like Shea Gildas Alexander and Jalen Williams, where his two-way package is exactly what the unorthodox Thunder needed. On this play, he's extending out to the perimeter in pick and roll, slides and forces a turnover with that seven and a half foot wingspan. Then in transition, his man has to pick up the dangerous Williams, and a wing like Tim Hardaway Jr. needs to pick up Chet. Only it's unnatural for him to stick a big like that, and all the confusion leaves Holmgren wide open. Earlier in the year, we discussed how OKC created space for Shea, and Chet fits right into that as a stretch big, where he basically serves as their fifth guard on the court in their positionless offense. And this has an effect even when he just spots up in the corner. Some defenders don't want to leave him, but when he's guarded by a shot blocker like Anthony Davis, AD's instinct is to roam way over and help, and that leaves Chet with insanely high percentage looks. Here's a little transition flare screen for Chet, Shea's man jumps out on him, so Nikola Jokic has to switch to SGA. And when they reset the action, Contavious Caldwell Pope isn't thinking about recovering to a center, so it's more confusion and yet another great shot. The Thunder love these early flare screens for Holmgren because he's skilled enough to drive it off the catch or take it and collapse the defense and then dime somebody else up. Meanwhile, the Spurs work to create space for Wemby because he's one of the most unique off-ball threats we've ever seen. His eight-foot wingspan is so long you can just throw it up to him, but he can also fly off screens and shoot it on the move over opposing centers. So if defenses start switching to stay in front of him, more space makes it easier to exploit his height mismatch. This time he's cross-matched with a small guard, tells his own center to clear out of the way, 
so he can get to the block and find an angle for an entry pass. That means if you switch, you're in trouble, but if you play the pick and roll straight up, he has that ridiculous lob radius, and then you're thinking about taking away the lob, and the guy just floats to the three-point line and starts bombing. Wemby's shooting in these spots is one of the most fascinating swing skills for a prospect in a long time because he's only hitting 32% from outside 10 feet, according to NBA.com, but his balance off the dribble and his incredibly high release make shooting accuracy a game changer for someone who can already do stuff like this at 20. By comparison, Chet is already at 41% on all his shots outside 10 feet, and working with the great Chip Englund in Oklahoma City could possibly make him an elite shooter as he develops. Holmgren's big swing skill is his self-generated scoring, where he's flashed mid-post moves like this little one-legged fadeaway, and he already has the ball handling to drive from the outside with these silky soft spin moves in either direction. So there's a foundation to build off here. Initiate the offense from the top, cross over and drive, then this crazy deceleration balancing act with the left, or face up, attack Wemby off the bounce with that double spin, and then the creative underhand scoop. And I think he stole that one from Victor himself. Right now, a ton of Chet's scoring is in the flow of the offense. His lob radius isn't too shabby either, but if he becomes a focal point who can directly stress defenses, it unlocks an entirely different level of offensive primacy. The offense is such a tantalizing skill for both of these players because they've had such historically great defensive impact. This is what a normal Wemby finish is like after striding through a bunch of defenders. And this is what it looks like against OKC, where he slaloms in for that dunk, but Holmgren gets higher than him and shuts it down. Opponents are shooting 10% worse than expected against both of them on shots within six feet of the basket, according to Second Spectrum. And they both have a considerable impact on opponent field goal percentage around the hoop whenever they're out on the court. Chet has this two-arm volleyball block down to a science, going vertical in the air without fouling on his contests, and he already has really strong awareness of when to slide over and commit to a shooter. This one's super impressive, where his man sets a pick, and then he tries to re-screen him, only Chet sniffs it out and reaches that layup. And this one might be better, where Colin Sexton's blowing by Josh Giddy. Meanwhile, Holmgren's looking for his man, sees it out of the corner of his eye, and takes a huge step and inhales it. Of course, Wemby himself is never more than about two steps from the rim and gives Sexton the same treatment. And there's sort of a helicopter effect with Vic, where he feels like he's everywhere sometimes, sliding with a dangerous wing, and then turning around to erase a layup. So Wembenyama's always lurking in the back of everyone's head. And after a while, players don't even want to shoot it around him, or even when they think he's around. Luka Doncic sets a screen here, and when he rolls, he actually fakes Wemby out of the way, but he's worried about Vic blocking it from behind, and the reason he's freaked out is because Wemby did this to Kyrie Irving earlier in the period, coming from behind to block it with the right hand, only to reach it with the left hand on the other side instead. If that wasn't enough, a minute earlier he actually blocked Luka's patented step back, so yeah, it's understandable that players stop looking for layups when Vic's just out on the court. This time it's Chet who spots a breakdown and makes a Spurs shooter think twice before shooting it around the basket. And then when this is swung around to the other side, he's in position to help out on Wemby. Only after a slick pass, Chet snaps around and stonewalls a shooter and then clears the play himself. Both of these guys recover so well after a first effort sliding with the ball and then spinning right back to a new threat. Here, Wemby is playing the ball handler in pick and roll, recovers to the pass, 
and look at that flexibility as he slams on the brakes to track P.J. Washington and just block him from over the top. This kind of body control and change of direction helps playing two-on-ones downhill like this, and especially in pick-and-roll coverages, dropping to play the ball and then turning to take away the lob. Although Chet has the craziest one I probably have ever seen, dropping and then defending the pass, and he tracks this lob over his head and absolutely stamps it how on earth. Holmgren and Wembenyama are just the 11th and 12th rookies to average 15 points and two blocks per game. And the previous 10 all made the Hall of Fame with a combined 93 All-Star appearances and nine Defensive Player of the Year awards. Holmgren is just the 13th rookie to play 2,000 minutes on a 55-win team. And the only ones who were clearly better were 24-year-old David Robinson, 22-year-old Tim Duncan, 23-year-old Bird, and a 20-year-old Magic. Vic has flirted with an all-NBA level since taking an incredible midseason leap that we profiled in January, and he will likely become the first rookie since Duncan in 1998 to make an all-defensive team after blocking the highest percentage of two-point shots of any player in the last 35 years. I've heard many people say that Wemby and Chet are ushering in a new archetype of player for the future, where seven-foot defensive monsters with guard skills will dominate the league. But much like Larry and Magic all those years ago, I don't think we're looking at a new archetype here. Instead, I think we're looking at two of the most unique and unrivaled players ever to play who will help define the next generation of basketball. To support this channel, check out patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball. That's where we have our proprietary stats for players and teams throughout the season. We have an historical database if you want to look up old rookies like Bird and Magic or Jordan and Hakeem. Let me know down below where you think these guys will finish when their career is all said and done. Otherwise, thanks for watching this one. And as always, I hope you're having a great day.